Welcome to Thai TV again. This is Mark coming from Switzerland. Now I'm going to show you how to tie a mayfly. Actually, this is this insect that I've been collecting on the river. This is a very common insect we have here and I've been fishing them during the few days that I've been fishing here for grilling. But basically it is called BWO, which stands for blue wing olive. Why? Because this fly got a, an olive body and a blue wing. And it's about 400 species in Europe, which are exactly the same type of color. Of course, everybody is using Latin name, which doesn't really help in fly fishing. We just need to be able to understand how big are the flies and what color it's involved. Okay, as you see here, this is what we are going to tie. And it matches exactly the insect we just seen before. So you have tail, olive body, wing, actually one wing, because the two wings of the insect are connected together like this. So let's show you how to tie that pattern. For that, I will use a TMC long hook shank. This is actually the 5214. And for the tail, what I'm going to use is Coq de Leon Pardo. I like very much this material because as you can see, it's an nicely spotted and that illustrates the segmentation of the tail. I mean, for a dry fly, especially for Subemago, it's not very important. For Imago, it's a little bit more important because, you know, the insect is dead on the surface of the water and fish has a lot more time to see the detail. Anyway, it's a very good material, Spanish. Uh, cock, we call it Coq de Leon. This is coming from the region of Leon in Spain. For that, you will put the barb like this in order to have the straight section here. Okay, for that I will use a, a grey thread. So I change the bobbin, put that in, and then thread the bobbin that way. So put the thread on get rid of the other section here and then you go up to the beginning of the bend and come back. So now we have to use uh, the Coq de Leon and I will use one of these uh, feathers. So the first thing you have to do for that is to put the bulb 90 degrees from the stem. Okay you take this feather like this you get rid of the very beginning and then you can grab the right amount like this, pull and as you see here it's straight here and then you grab everything together and this is straight here also. Now this is the wrong hand, I'd like to have it the other way around to tie it. So go like this, push on your finger and then you return it that way and as you see here it's still straight. So let's tie now the tail. Okay, a few wraps like this. It's nice. So the color we say BVO, blue wings olive. So for that I will use an olive color. That color will do the job for the body. For that I will use only one CDC. It's long enough, but as you see here, it's very nicely conical and I will take advantage of that. For that, I will tie the feather in and pull up to the extremity and then tie nicely up to where I am going to end the body. Here. Now we use the special plier for CDC. Grab the large extremity here, put it in, then get rid of the very beginning which can get tangled with the thread and start the first wrap without twisting and then twist and wrap twist and wrap twist and wrap regularly to get advantage of the natural conicity of the stem which is going to give us a really nice conical body shape i would say without any effort because uh, this is not me doing that but the feather here you end up 
keep that tight, remove the plier and go a couple of wraps to secure the thread. And once you have done that, you can wrap additional turn in front and everything is secure. Then you trim the excess of the feather. As, as you see here, we have some bobs which cannot be incorporated in this process. So the only thing you have to do is to use your scissors and clean up the body. And you see using the rotation of the vise, it's very easy to clean up the body and have a very nice conical body shape without any effort. And by the way, this technique also is good because you have a segmented body. So you don't need to wrap any additional thread to give the illusion of the segmentation. So now what we have to do is to put the wing. So BVO blue wing olive. So we need a kind of a blue color. We call it blue dawn. That will be the right color. This is not color number one. This is the blue dawn col color. So use two of them. And here the same procedure. Put the bob 90 degrees from the stem. Get rid of the very beginning. Save that one. Do that again on the second one. Get rid of the very beginning. Take two of those, put them on top of each other, lying in the same kind of natural curve. And as you see here, one is a little bit more curved than the other one. No matter, everything will be straight in that tool. Okay, so this is the table clip of the magic tool. Take the large one, it's a large feather, so no problem. And now we have a little waist on both sides that we are going to trim off that way. Now get your clip, open the table clip. And as you see here, the stems are nicely lined up, easy to trim them off. Do not hesitate to use the other fingers to help you to be steady one, once you are doing the cutting that way. And yet, as you see here, the waist is nearly nothing. Okay, now we have all the long section inside. So what we are going to do now is to change it from, from one clip to a, another that way. Now you see that the long fibers are sticking out and by using the stacker, uh, which is a very nice tool, which actually works with any of those uh, clip, you can stack everything together like this and have a nice bunch of fibers that which we use for the, the wing. So grab everything, go like this, few wraps to secure, and then you go on the back, and then you use the material clip to release your bobbin. So that way, the thread is not on the way when I'm going to cut the excess here on the front. Instead of being too bulky, it's kind of conical, so it's much better like this. The work is not finished yet because I need to not have the fibers like this, like a comparadon, but like an upwing. We saw that the two wings of this insect are touching each other. So for that, you just go on the back here with your bobbin, go around the wing a couple of times, like you would do actually for a post. And now everything is strangled straight like this. Look at that. So now what is left is very simple. Thorax and legs. For that we are going to use some more CDC, but I would like very much to use darker CDC. So I will probably use for that one uh, a color that I like very much which is the beast that color that color number is actually 16 uh, and i will show you how to handle that two small one will do the job perfectly for that okay so easy put the bob 90 degrees from the stem get rid of the very beginning then repeat the same procedure 
on the second feather, get rid of the very beginning and then put one on top of each other and on the same kind of natural direction. Use the table clip. I think the large one will do the job. Yes, perfect. Drop that in. Trim the excess on both sides and then transfer to the regular clip. The stems are nicely lined up, easy to trim them off at once. And once again, the waste is nearly nothing. So now, the technique is uh, pretty simple. We are going to use this needle in order to split the thread and you can make it flat and then open the thread. Now you incorporate the echo substitute that way, release the clip. The first thing we have to do is to spin a little bit in my finger and then take 10 centimeters out of the bobbin and spin the bobbin. When you've got enough twists, you forward them close to the brush area and then you rewind in the bobbin. And here there is one thing which is important. How can we make a thorax out of that? It's very simple. I call it the online dobbing. Why? Because I will use this material already online to do like this and make a dobbing out of it. And that will be the thorax when the other section here will be dedicated to legs. So let's go a couple of wraps on front, lift the wing, go around on the back a couple of times. And as you see now, the wing is standing up nicely and I just need to end up with few wraps around on the front, on the back, on the front and on the back again and then end up on the front by pushing all the element on the back to be safe to finish the fly here. Now use the finisher. I personally like very much to do two whip finish knot because I'm not pulling too much on the first one and I secure then by the real one which is the second one. So if the second one breaks I still have the first one to secure the pattern. Okay so now we have to play around a little bit with that comb just to make sure that all the element is at the right place right underneath. This is going to be the legs right and this is the wing. The work is not finished yet because uh, you see that the shape of the wing is about like this and in the nature as you have seen it's right the opposite. So do not hesitate to rotate your vise First of all, you trim at just the length. So now every fiber has got the same length, but it's open like this. So I will rotate the vise in that position and shape the wing as it is by a couple of cuts like this. And as you see here, now you've got the right proportion. One more thing, the legs. As you see here, we have plenty of legs, including right on the bottom here. So rotate the vise, trim off the excess, make it flat here and as you see here this is where the fly is going to land on the water and that illustrates very well the legs and we are lucky here there is a little wind so you can see how flexible is this material. This is the reason why CDC is so good at fly tying. It gives the illusion of life like any other material can do. Even just a little wind will give you the illusion of a live insect. So thank you for watching Thai TV. Uh, if you like this fly, send a comment and maybe one of you will get it. Thank you for your attention. Have a nice day.